the psychological framework, which previous, has previously defied explanation. For the time had to observe a more wondrous territory, young Ian's synchronicity and ancient law become ever more comprehensible. <laughs> 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 If you accept that the same principles of physics occur in the macrocosm and the microcosm, is it too big a leap to accept the principles of behaviour and synchronicity also operate in a fractal way on a micro and macro level? <laughs> yes! <laughs> So I got criticised on many websites for saying, well, I, I understand the forces of nature. And um, the statement comes back, well, that's not a very scientific thing to say, there might be a fifth force. And um, actually, the reason I know that there isn't, or if there is, it's very, very weak, <clears throat> is because of things like the Large Hadron Collider. And particularly, um, well, we have the standard model of particle physics, which tells us about all the forces of nature other than gravity that we know of, and the particles that make up the universe. And we have this beautiful, uh, simple, I mean, it's sometimes it's a language, it is beautiful and simple, it's called a standard model of particle physics. This describes all the physics we know of in the universe, in principle, other than the force of gravity. So the three strong forces of nature, and the astrologers are claiming that there should be room, there may be room for a fourth one. Let me just give you one example of how accurately we know that this thing works, and how very subtle the fifth force would have to be. Um, and this uh, is Richard Feynman, who is one of the fathers of the standard model. He was the father of the, the theory of the electromagnetic force, quantum electrodynamics, the quantum theory of Maxwell's theory of electricity and magnetism. And um, his theory, this is back in the 50s, allows you to calculate many things. These things are called Feynman diagrams. And you can calculate with exquisite precision the properties of the world. And one of the most exquisitely calculated is, is, is the way that electrons behave in magnetic fields. And that depends intensely on, on, on diagrams like this. This is an electron scattered up with an electron with a photon being exchanged. This is the same diagram but with another photon called a virtual photon. So you get these things on quantum corrections. And they, we can measure, we can calculate them beautifully and measure them very accurately. They affect the physical properties of nature. Um, this, or the gyromagnetic ratio, it doesn't matter what it is, of the electron, is a number you can calculate and measure, it tells you how electrons interact with magnetic fields. It is incredibly sensitive to new forces of nature, or indeed how the forces we know of behave. That's the experimental measurement of that number, and this is the calculation of that number based on our understanding of the forces of nature. And it is exquisite. It is, the, the agreement is something like measuring the distance from New York to Los Angeles to the diameter of the human hair. But it's not some kind of esoteric number. It's a number that depends on our understanding of the forces of nature. So, fuck off. <laughs>